two police forces are to pay compensation to more than 600 survivors and families for the cover-up which followed the Hillsborough disaster in 1989. 96 Liverpool football fans were killed in a crush on the terraces during an FA Cup semi-final. Only one person's ever been convicted for a health and safety offence. Last week, the trial of three men accused of perverting the course of justice over the disaster collapsed. One campaigner whose brother was killed at Hillsborough said today's announcement would never make up for all the years when the fans were blamed for what happened. Our correspondent, Hannah Miller, has more. As they remember the 96 who died, for many the trauma lives on. As the tragedy of Hillsborough passes from generation to generation, survivors and families will now receive compensation, along with support for counselling that many continue to need. 17-year-old Stephen Robinson was among those who lost their lives that day. If the apology had been made the day after the disaster, then I think that there would have been a lot more forgiveness. But to put the families through what they put us through for the past 33 years is a disgrace. Today, South Yorkshire Police offered an unreserved apology for the serious errors and mistakes made on the day and in subsequent investigations. In a statement, they said the force's subsequent failings also caused huge distress, suffering and pain, both to the victims and their families. This is something South Yorkshire Police profoundly regrets. We know these settlements can never make up for what they have lost and suffered. Behind every single one of these 601 claims is a personal story. A survivor, a mum, dad, brother, sister, who spent the past 32 years trying to fight the lies that were told about their relatives. It's gone on for so long that some of those who received compensation have already passed away. No individual will ever be held responsible for what happened on that day. A trial of two former South Yorkshire police officers and the force's ex-lawyer was thrown out. As recently as last week, their lawyers were publicly claiming there never was a cover-up. The judgment today finally clears their names and brings to an end the myth of the Hillsborough cover-up once and for all. The solicitor who represented more than 200 families says this may be the closest they get to justice. I think it's important to say that there hasn't been an admission of liability by either South Yorkshire or West Midlands Police. Obviously, as you look at it from the outside, one would say, well, they wouldn't pay compensation to these people if they didn't think there was something wrong. So the civil process hopefully has allowed some measure of justice to be seen to be done. Their calls for a Hillsborough law continue to place a legal duty on public institutions to tell the truth. The fact it could be suppressed for so long continues to provide cause to reflect. Hannah Miller, ITV News, Liverpool. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to Professor Phil Scrayton. His investigations into the altering of police statements after Hillsborough led to the setting up of the Hillsborough Independent Panel in 2009. I started by asking how he feels about lawyers for those acquitted last week, again questioning Liverpool fans' behaviour, even after lawyers for the police had agreed their failings and compensation. I've made a formal complaint to the Bar Standards Committee about their behaviour, a six-page complaint, in fact, which demonstrates very clearly that what the lawyer in particular, the barrister in particular, um, for the solicitor who'd been charged, uh, said was completely uh, not only false, but it was mischievous because he repeated the tropes that had been stated in the week after the disaster, that it was hooliganism, violence, drunkenness, and ticketlessness that caused the deaths. South Yorkshire Police has apologised and acknowledged its failings on the day of the match and subsequent investigations. So many people will now wonder why no one has been criminally uh, convicted. Is it because of the difference between civil claims like this and the proof needed for a criminal case. The problem is that the standard of proof against individuals who committed individual acts that could have led to those deaths is entirely different to that generic finding of institutional failure. So although the inquest found institutional failure, 
in on all that, in all other forums, institutional failure has been demonstrated. That was not a finding against an individual, and an individual who is culpable, you have to be able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that their responsibility led directly to the deaths. Is it enough after 32 years of suffering? It's. N I would want to be very clear that in my knowledge of so many families and so many different instances, they never seek compensation just for the funds. That's, that's, that's irrelevant to them. They see it as a court and a settlement of justice. And that is really the most significant issue to state. And I think that sometimes the public opinion will say, why are they still pursuing it? Why are they still going on? They're not pursuing it because they want funds or money. They're pursuing it because they're looking for justice, justice to which we have known they have been entitled for so many years. That is why the settlement has been so important, because it states, in quick terms, never again should this happen. And much of that truth, Phil Scrayton, is down to your hard work. We thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to speak. Two other stories making the headlines tonight.